We talk about this and talk about that. Shut up, stop running out, let's talk about facts. Live a little, laugh a lot, let's have some fun. Listen to Gina, she'll tell you how it's done. Did you know? Good to know. What did you know? Well, now you know. Never know what's gonna happen on the No Filter Show. Loud and proud, funny and cool. Say what you're thinking, that's her only rule. Be the change. Be the change. Come watch the No Filter Show. No Filter is brought to you by Oasis Shopping Bahamas. Online shopping made easy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the No Filter Show with Gina Knowles. That's me. And we're here for another segment. I think it's going to be awesome because today we have the Honorable, I said that wrong, the Dr. Honorable Dwayne Sands, who is the Minister of Health in the Bahamas. And I have some good questions I have to ask him, as well as we have our chief head nodes admin, Katrina Kuku Parkinson. All of that happening today. Stay tuned. It's going to be awesome. And uh, thanks for tuning in. See you in a bit. No Filter is brought to you by Oasis Shopping Bahamas, Bank of the Bahamas, Quality Home Center, Dairy Queen, Hillshire Farm, Boss, BAF Financial and Insurance, Checkers Cafe, Doctors Hospital, Marathon Vet Clinic, Mesa Grill, Live to Fish, Lowe's Pharmacy, Riley Boys Auto and Car Rental, Ultra Games, and The Pediatric Place. Hey, hey, boo, what's up? Right, yeah. You still going to the event? Yeah, I ordered my dress right now. Let me call you back. Okay, good, you too. how it feels to consolidate your debt with Bank of the Bahamas. And this is how it feels to reduce your monthly payments. Come discover the new BOB, offering debt consolidation loans at the lowest rate in town. And guess what? You can get cash in addition to cleaning up your finances. That's how it feels. Apply today for your BOB debt consolidation loan. Terms and conditions apply. This segment is brought to you by Bank of the Bahamas, the Bank of Solutions. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the No Filter Show with me, Gina. And I have my special guest with me, a long time friend of mine. I shouldn't tell you all he's my friend, hey, but anyway, that's too bad. And I'm going to make sure I say this right. Say it right. Don't get it wrong. It's the, I have it written down, Dr. The Honorable Dwayne Sands. Now, in my opinion, it should say Honorable Dr. Dwayne Sands, because, but anyway, that's why I always screw it up. So, welcome, Thank you. Minister. It is a pleasure to be here. He is the Minister of Health. Now, I know him as Dr. Sands, you see, because he treated my daddy and many family members of mine, and um, he has a special place in my heart, and so I really wanted to bring him on because uh, I want people to know, I keep, telling, I keep telling him all the time that for some reason everybody has him like he's this arrogant doctor who knows everything and he just over educated but y'all need to know him like i know him make he dead cool you know and i keep telling him if people know his cool side but you know he got to be professional and now he's this whole minister of parliament and all that which means uh, but anyway so very welcome thank you and um i want to i'm going to ask you a few down to earth questions it's not going to be like one of those um talk shows we're just gonna get into all your nitty-gritty and what you're doing and uh, blah, blah, blah. I want people to know who you are you my boy no problem so first of all you are a dad a plant eater and I still haven't quite figured out how this thing work so five five kids yep whoa so you have plenty children I didn't even know a lot and then you are recently married I like this wife 
she dead cool. I ain't gonna lie. And I keep telling him that she has totally. I thought he. I. I. I think that she's brought him down to a whole different level because she's so fun and outgoing, and she pulls you out and all around the place. And I know sometimes I only think about how irritating it is that you must be out to dinner with your brand new wife when somebody comes up and goes, Dr. Oh, Sands, I would like to ask you a question. I know she's ready, ready to well, chop them. I get rowed last night. Oh. Okay? Because I was on my way home and then I got summoned to a particular show. It wasn't my show. It wasn't your show. So I told the host, now you need to send her some flowers. <laughs> because... I sent, I sent a present. Remember? No, no problem. You did. You did. Yeah, that's right. Anytime I call him, I say something because I know I'm a wife. So I just get irritated too when you're trying to borrow my husband on my time. And then being a minister and all that and everybody pulling you, I need time too, you know. But it's not as bad as being a surgeon. I was going to say, we're going to get into that. So now, you originally was a cardiovascular surgeon. Oh, look at that. I got it right. And um, you've been doing that many years. 30 years. 30 years. 33 years. And you were the best in the country. And the reason why I could say that is because if I needed a doctor, I would call him. And I could tell you, I remember when originally we heard a rumor that he was going to run for um, member of parliament for Ministry of Health. And I, I remember saying to him, are you crazy? What are you doing? Because if you do that, then who, 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 who's taking care of people? Well, I still get cussed out. Well, good. But, you know, most people say now, why are you fooling around with this politics stuff? Just be sure when I call you, yeah. you come. Exactly. Because I could tell you all a story. In the middle of him campaigning, I remember he was at uh, one of those rally things, and my mom was really, really sick. And my mommy only this big. And she was already, she was not feeling well at all. She started losing weight. I panicked. I texted you, and I was like, my mom is really sick, and I need you. And I'll never forget when you said, I am at a rally right now, but I'll be there after. And I swear, it had to be 15 minutes. He pulls up to my house, and my mom is sitting there, sick as a dog, and she says, Dr. Dwayne Sands is in my house. And it was like, I only call the best. And it was so sweet. And stuff like that, like people don't know that you have that in you, you know. A lot of people, they, they, they're like, when I tell people that story, they still don't believe it. They're like, what? Well, now, before we go into this, I don't want y'all thinking y'all could call him and he come into your house. He come into my house. Let me just clear that up. <laughs> you know, a lot of people think they know me. Right. Because they see me a lot on TV, they see me in the papers, etc. And so they create a personality that they think is mine. Yes. But a lot of people don't know me. Well, same with me, you know, because as, as much of a hard mode I have and all that, when I cry, people look like, you just cry? And I'm like, you all only know, I cry at public commercials. So I cry. So, you know, they don't know you. They, they decide to make up who they want you. And then when they get to know you, then they feel stupid. And it's also an issue of association. So... In my life as a surgeon, particularly as a trauma surgeon, people see you in these very somber occasions and they assume that that is basically all you are all the time, which is not, not necessarily the case. Right. And so now you, what made you, I know that you were one of the best and I know that I've heard stories where people actually used to call you out of the country to do these surgeries. So you must have been good if they actually could call you and say, I need you to leave up this little rock to come over here because I want you to do surgery on me. So what made you say in your mind, oh, I'm going to go into politics? First of all, you should always leave before people ask you to leave. So the best time to leave anything is when you're at the top of your game. And uh, there are a lot of people that never got that message. Whether you're playing professional sports or whether you're professional and you just stay a little bit too long or far too long. Uh, the second thing is that you ought to be able to see down the roadways. And, you know, certainly for, for me, I spent a lot of time doing trauma, mm -hmm. dealing with violence. And after a while, it got a bit, bit repetitive that you are fixing a hole created by a bullet in some young dude. And you say, maybe there's a different way to handle this. Maybe we can fix this and stop these young fellows from getting shot. And maybe uh, we can deal with uh, the healthcare system as opposed to one patient at a time, make it better for everybody. So that was the call. Um, you know, you sometimes, I sometimes lay up and look at the ceiling and say, boy, are you sure you know what you're doing? Because um, sometimes you really wonder mm -hmm. whether 
Did I make the right choice? You, you, you made the right choice. But it, it's, there's never a dull day, never <laughs> a dull moment. No question about it. <laughs> no. And so do, at this moment, do you have any regrets? Uh, if you could turn back time, would you do it again? I would. Okay. I would. And you plan to run again? Right now, that's the plan. But, you know, in politics, a day is like a lifetime. Right. And you could be up today, and tomorrow you wish you hadn't woken up. So let's just see how it goes. And as a Minister of Health, what all falls under you? So I have responsibility for the delivery of health care to everybody in the country. So that's all of the hospitals, all of the clinics. we got 98 clinics around the country. Jeez, I didn't even know that. Uh, we also deal with the port health, so dealing with the cruise ships and tourists coming in, the airport services. We no longer take care of environmental health. Uh, that's now with the Ministry of Environment. But uh, undertakers, mortuaries, that falls under the Ministry of Health. Uh, so there's quite a few things. That's cool. it's, it's a lot. We also deal with surveillance. So measles, uh, dengue, Zika, Shh. malaria, all that kind of stuff. Trying to keep it out of the Bahamas. Okay, and um, b before we go to break, I have one question. Can you tell us what... How do you decide if you should go to a clinic or you should go to a PMH emergency room? If you're really, really sick or if you have a very serious problem, go to the emergency room at PMH. But if you're not really, really sick, it'd probably be better if you went to one of the community clinics. Now, And then the clinic will tell you if it's to pass them to go to the emergency room. By force of habit. Mm -hmm. As much as you hear people complain about PMAs and how long they've been waiting and so on and so forth, Bahamians have a huge amount of confidence in Princess Margaret Hospital in the emergency room. So 60,000 or more people show up in that emergency room every year. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the clinics attached to Princess Margaret Hospital, that's another 100,000. So there's a huge number of people that go to the hospital every single year. But the same doctors at the hospital, they go to the clinics too, right? Uh, for the most part. But we recognize that we have to make it easier for people to choose the clinics. Right. Make it faster, more convenient, uh, more pleasant experience, so that the really, really sick people, the people having heart attacks, strokes, uh, really bad infections, kidney failure, whatever, let them go to the hospital. If you got a cough or cold or you just got a sprain or whatever, mm -hmm. then we prefer you to go to the clinic. But there's some work to be done right? Uh, so that people really start to feel that, okay, this was a good idea for me to go to South Beach Clinic or Fleming Street Clinic or Elizabeth Estates because I had a good experience. Uh, the nurses were good. The doctors were good. Uh, I didn't have to wait a whole lot, lot of time. And my outcome was really good. Right. Okay, everybody, we're going to be right back. We're here with... Uh Oh, this title. Anyway, Dwayne Sands. Dwayne Sands, my boy, the doctor, the Minister of Health. And we'll be right back, okay? Come on into the Quality Home Center. You will see the savings from when you enter. Your one stop department store with so much niceness. Friendly staff, great atmosphere, low prices. They got brand name appliances, furniture, hardware, electronics, home decor, toys and apparel, shop and save. There's no need to go away. Stay at home and save big. Stop and shop at the quality home center. Home center, spend less and live better. At Doctors Hospital Emergency, we see stroke patients every day. As an ER physician, I depend on the MRI machine to help me quickly diagnose acute stroke patients and treat them in a timely manner. In stroke patients, time is of the essence, and having an MRI machine available 24 hours a day is essential. Doctors Hospital MRI equipment ensures better outcome for our stroke patients every day of the year. This segment is brought to you by Quality Home Center. Spend less, live better. Hi everybody, we're back with No Filter and I'm here with Minister of Health, Dr. Dwayne Sands. I'm sticking with that because that's what I know. That's all. So, I, like you know, right? I like that. Okay, because I was told it's disrespectful to call him Dwayne. I just let him call me Gina. I'm going to think of a cool title for you to call me. <laughs> okay, so 
Now, I have to ask you um, what everybody, the whole world wants to know when it comes to the CBD oil and marijuana legalization and if you're allowed to sell it and if you could buy it and all of that. And I saw you uh, uh, two weeks ago, you sent out this whole thing that I didn't read. So for people like me who don't read the whole eight pages long, tell me the breakdown. Is it legal? Can you have it? What are we doing? Do you want to legalize it? Tell me. It is only legal if you have a license. If you don't have a license to import or to distribute or to sell, it's illegal. How do I get a license? You have to apply to the minister. That's me. Okay, I'm applying tomorrow, everybody, and I'll be selling CBD oils but, soon. But, but bear in mind <laughs> that, that we have impaneled a marijuana commission to look at the whole issue of liberalization, legalization, medicinal use, recreational use. They are just in the middle of their deliberations. And so imagine me now taking a run around their deliberations and going and issuing 100 licenses. We're not going to do that. Right. So except for people that have uh, a compassionate need or a need for um, these products, let's say, for cancer or intractable seizures, we are not likely to issue uh, any new licenses. So if my friend have cancer, that don't mean I could go smoking their weed. Okay, that is not legal. For people who are selling this stuff on the side of the street and have big time or um, I'm signed, they, they're selling this, not legal. We're not there as yet. California took 50 years. Proposition 19 failed in 1972. They managed to get it past medicinal marijuana in California in 1996. So from 72 to 96, they were trying, trying, trying. And we just thought. 2016, they legalized recreational use of marijuana. Mm -hmm. We started this thing in January, February. Right. It's been three months. Right. They yeah. expect you to have your wand. Give me a couple of weeks. You know. So what we'd like to do is to be able to look at what should happen in the Bahamas, make some recommendations, and then... You know, I don't think I'm uh, letting on anything big. We will probably change some things, but I don't know exactly what we're going to change. Because there's a but whole the board meantime, who makes these decisions. In the meantime, the law is the law. The Dangerous Drug Act says that it is illegal unless you have a license. And that includes every part of, product from, piece of, uh, Indian hemp, marijuana, cannabis, whatever you want to call it. Does anybody presently have a license? No. Okay, boom, clear that up. So technically, it's illegal. Nobody has the license. You need the license. And everybody asking the same question over and over. And they keep saying that, oh, the minister's um, twisting up his words. Well, you just hear him. It's not legal. In order to get a license, you need to get it from him. And he ain't signed on off. So you hear it out his mouth. So don't go mix up the story, okay? And when you get catch selling it, dealing it, and doing all and doing it, don't don't get locked up and go call um, Dwayne Johnson because I have to say, um, watch my show because I said it live on TV. You and I didn't read the eight pages. Boom, finish. So you know you see people selling breath mints, gummy bears, candy, etc. Anything with CBD. They got hairspray with CBD. They got lotion, shampoo, all kinds of stuff. And it is a commercial issue right now. Uh, is there potentially a significant market? Can it raise the economy? There's all types of potential, but at the end of the day, the Bahamas has not changed its laws. Okay. So let's take a couple of days, people. I know, right? Like, give them a break. Okay, how do you feel about the NHI? Like, tell me what's going on with that. It has implemented. I know at first they had rumors about they was going to start this other tax, but it didn't happen. I'm about an NHI, and I love it. But how do you feel, and what's going on with that? 50,000 people currently enjoy NHI benefits. They get primary care services free of charge. I love it. I'm a part of that. Uh, in the private sector, okay? What we are trying to do is to expand the reach of NHI to include expensive or high-cost care, like dialysis, like cardiac care, like cancer care, etc. That's <laughs> the type of stuff that Bahamians started talking about when we began this conversation about NHI. No more cookouts. You know, people need $25,000 in order to let mommy get surgery or right. to let mommy get chemotherapy, etc. And so what we are hoping to do is to expand the coverage of NHI with selected high-cost care items. In order to do that, we have to increase the annual budget for NHI. 
where's the money going to come from? Exactly. So what we've been discussing include increasing uh, the uh, levy on sugar-sweetened beverages, uh, looking at uh, contributions from employers and employees, uh, trying to divert some of the value-added tax from health insurance so that everybody else can get uh, the special uh, benefits package, including at NHI. Mm -hmm. These decisions will be made by the Cabinet of the Bahamas roughly around the time of the budget for 2019-2020. So we have to make that decision. This is clearly a political decision because even though everybody or 90 plus percent of people want the benefits, fewer people want to pay for it. I was going to say, we ain't want to pay. I ain't going to lie. Okay. So now when it comes to the, this is the, my last question. And we have to go into fun questions because I'm running out of time. Um, the outer eye, the family island clinics, what are we doing to get them better? We got 98 clinics around the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and they include multiple clinics in Andrus, multiple clinics in Zuma, Luthra, etc. When you have to replicate, triplicate, duplicate services everywhere, you got to have doctors everywhere, nurses everywhere, x-ray machines, lab testing, and so on and so forth, it becomes incredibly expensive. I was going to say, plenty of money. And then maintenance is uh, very, very difficult. So. Maybe the model that we used in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, maybe we need to change it and perhaps centralize some of the care. Now, when you say that, and I'm going to use some non-ministerial language, you piss some people off because the clinic was two minutes from my house and now you all will move it. Right. So I now have to drive 10 minutes to get to the clinic. Right. This is where the difficult conversation And they may not like change. But, you know, what we're trying to do is to improve the primary care uh, offerings to make sure that we deal specifically with the non-communicable diseases and also provide support so that people can take some responsibility for their own health. Hmm, that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to go to one more break, and then when we come back, we're going to ask them some down-to-earth, real people questions, okay? No Filter is brought to you by Oasis Shopping Bahamas, Bank of the Bahamas, Quality Home Center, Dairy Queen, Hillshire Farm, Boss, BAF Financial and Insurance, Checkers Cafe, Doctors Hospital, Marathon Vet Clinic, Mesa Grill, Live to Fish, Lowe's Pharmacy, Riley Boys Auto and Car Rental, Ultra Games, and The Pediatric Place. Hey DQ fans, everyone knows DQ has the best sweet treats, but we also have delicious and affordable food options too. Presenting the DQ $7 Fan Meal. For just $7, choose from one of three delicious oven hot sandwiches, chicken bacon ranch, grilled chicken, or turkey BLT. Plus enjoy a DQ Sunday, a soda and a chip, all for just $7. This is one ridiculous deal you don't want to miss. DQ, it's fan food, not fast food. The Met will be hosting its annual ball, and we are going to rob it. Maybe you just need someone watching your back. Like a partner. Why you want to catch a fresh today? Another one, baby? 
another one. We already found some fish, but we're gonna find some more. Plan the best day of your life today. Check us out at www.live2.fish or on Facebook, Instagram, and TripAdvisor. Email us at info at live2.fish. This segment is brought to you by Dairy Queen. Fan food, not fast food. Hi, everybody. We're back with No Filter, and I have with me... Dr. Dwayne Sands, Minister of Health in the Bahamas. And um, now we're going to ask him some real down-to-earth questions so people will know who he is. I thought those were some fun questions, and I liked them. Um, so you all will know, you know, what he's about, you know. So, Dwayne, out the top of your head, you're going to answer. I said Dwayne. I'm sorry. Minister. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm going to – I would expect you to call me Mrs. Knowles for now on, okay? That's right. That's, That's it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so you're going to say the first thing. The answer and no thinking. Are you ready? No. Okay. Coffee or tea or orange juice? Coffee. Yuck. I don't like coffee. Are you a morning or night person? Morning, absolutely. Four o'clock. Jesus. French fries or carrots? Uh, depends on who's watching. <laughs> it's true. He's a doctor. Hot or cold weather? Cold. Really cold. Do you like a boat or a plane? A plane. Loud party or quiet dinner? Quiet, intimate. Sexy. Mm. I'm going all, I ain't going that way. Yeah, I can say it. I don't care. And um, do you do rather a uh, tank top or suit? Uh, this is not me. But, you know, you got to do it for the job. You see that? You all don't know that, hey? Because he always in a suit. Uh, what is your sign? Pisces. Oh, they're difficult people. Just letting you know that. What is the funniest thing that's ever happened to you? Well, it's probably my 1,500 meter experience in high school. So I was uh, four foot ten, eighty five pounds. Volunteer to run, you know, take one for the team. Volunteer. Right? So you need the points. The team needs the points. Break off running, and by the third lap, the person who was going to win the race ran past me, lapped me. <laughs> okay. So coming in to the finish line, now everybody laughing. I decide I can break off and sprint the last hundred meters, and at that point, the crowd went wild. Superstar. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he ended like what? A, and what did you place? Last. That's all right. So we ended last, but listen, hey, he ended it good. Special mention. Oh, okay. And you got a participation um, <laughs> little little ribbon. Couldn't, couldn't walk for about a month. After. I know. That's, that's beside the point. I know, exactly. Okay. If you were stranded on an island, what would be a one luxury item you would take and one necessity? Got to have my stereo. Got to have my uh, speakers. Uh, I know, but no electricity now. But anyway, so ah. you need some electricity. You, you need batteries for a lifetime. And then I got to have a coffee. Okay, last question. What is the scariest thing you've ever done? Oof. Scariest thing I ever done was been in a plane crash. <gasps> for real? Yep. When was that? That was in 1982 in Boston. Had a plane crash on the end of the runway at Logan Airport, wound up in the water. A couple of fatalities and had to... <gasps> Uh, it was in January, so it was the river was iced over. No. And we skidded off the end of the runway and wound up in Boston Harbor. Oh, my goodness. See? So he was supposed to be here today. That's, that's almost like Aria. It's his purpose. He's supposed to be here. <laughs> so me and flying, mm, oh, you're still we, still ain't, we still got a little vibe. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Everybody, um, i just like to say I hope that you enjoyed our time. I hope you got to learn who he is. If you have any questions, call me because I get out. I text them. I don't care. And Dwayne, thank Minister, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it, and I hope you come next season. Thank you, Mrs. Knowles. It's okay. been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> See that he got that down. Pa. Everybody, we'll be right back with Patrina from Head Knowles. See you later. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the No Filter Show with our Head Knowles segment. And I'm here with our chief admin of Head Knowles, Patrina Koo Farkasan. Hi, Patrina. Hi, Gina. How are you? I'm great, thank you. So, Patrina, first mm -hmm. of all, why are you the chief? What makes you the chief? How you get the chief? I really, I have no idea. Ask Leah next time. No, she's you on should the show. know why. You should know why. We we both said you're the chief. Really? Yeah. I don't remember. I think you just made me that, right? She's Chris the Ninja. <laughs> That too. We call her the ninja because I think she's uh, 
she's a ruthless one who um she i think that at first leah and i were a lot nicer you were nice but then you would be like why are you guys stressing out you're allowing mm -hmm. these people to stress you all out and y'all yes. don't, don't get paid for this yes and then she would go in and then nicely type a nice little speech explaining to all the age cares this is this and that is that and then i started going okay now you may do nice well, I think also because you own it, you and Leah own this group and you started it out of the goodness of your heart, a lot of times you are so invested in it, they don't see when people are using you, you know? And um, also because you're involved in all the organization, you really did need someone to just do and execute. Right. And I, I really enjoy that part. Right. I, I love working with you guys because you have um, good ways, you are, you, uh, underlying everything is your need to help others. And so we don't have to deal with all the drama and grandstanding. I hate that part. All the talking and all the no doing. No, I, I need to be with people who are doing. Right, and how long have you been uh, the chief admin? You know that, Hazar? Yeah, I think uh, almost four years now. And um, as an admin, what would you say is the best part? Oh, the best part is that, you know, like in any group, uh, we are like a microcosm of society, right? So I get to see where people arise like to their highest when helping and, and that we can come together like we've done in so many ways. Like, I mean, Hurricane Joaquin was the, the first time I ever saw people just mobilize. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were together before the hurricane even got here. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, to me, um, my children were introduced to community service in that hurricane. Yeah, mine too. And it was a, it was amazing way for me to, you know, show them all the things I talk about in action with other people. Because sometimes when you talk to your children, they're like, "Oh my God, there she goes again." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they saw so many people coming together, oh, and yeah. that was Very that easy. to me was the best part. Is what we do in the aftermath of hurricanes. Not, not that I want any more hurricanes. What, what, what is the worst part of being admin? The worst part is when I actually have to parent people more than I parent my children. Because like any, like, like if it's a reflection of society, we have all kinds, right? And my thing is always, if you don't have anything positive to say, just scroll on. We are not a place where you can come in and just dump all your anxiety or dump all your angst for the day. And yeah, it just makes the, you know, it just like, makes who do you think it. you think me? Only me is coming in there. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you, ha you and Leah have rights that none of us have in that group. So this is my thing. It's a safe place, but it also attracts good and bad. And sometimes we're so unkind. You know, the things that are said in that group, that makes me mad. Like, that, that's the part I hate. I don't like deleting, but I also think, uh, let me delete it before someone who is really triggered by it sees it. And th this, let me say too, because I know everybody looking at, 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 at Patrina and saying, now where's she from? So Patrina, get, let, let's clear Listen, this up because- the, I is a Bahamian, you number one, okay? Mm -hmm. yes. I got passport. I tell her bring Lots a passport, of passport because people think I believe her. I can, I can bring it next time. Yeah. Yeah, Lee. And I, and mm -hmm. you see that? And I told her, and she said, child, please, and all that. <laughs> and I was telling, because our admin, our jury, we the colors of Benetton. Oh, yes. From all over Absolutely. the place. Absolutely. And we love Absolutely. that. Because especially if we have to have an argument over if we think this should happen or this should happen, it's nice that we are so diverse. So when we, yes. we could have a fair conversation, I think it stays, I think it goes. Right. You know, and usually if Katrina says yes or no, then we just say, that's the chief, that's it, boom. Um, so, you know, but I want you all to know, you know, we all mix up like Hong Salad, and that's what makes it fair. Correct. You know, all fair ground. Um, I got to move ahead very quickly, but I want to know, if do you think that this is a hard job or easy job when it comes to managing 23,000 people? Well, I think it is difficult. I think we do it, all of us, out of love because we want, because I think HK is so experimental. Do you know? It's like this mini world that where we can actually start to understand and work together and then try to infect the rest of the world with it because we're trying to get better all the time. And even the people who are rude or might not be um, you know, helpful are in there. And so all our actions matter, mat matter because someone's watching. 
So what do you think right now is the purpose of head nodes? Well, I think it's to help. Initially, it started because we, we I mean, it started with help. But now, I think it's more to um, share information, to connect each other. And while we're waiting to, for the next time we can um, rush to help, we're also learning how to um, manage manage people of many different ilks, right? I think that's very important. Yes, yes. And it's been, it's, it's really always an adventure and every day is something new, it's really fun. We laugh a lot and we think that uh, we're never gonna be surprised and then something happens. Oh and my gosh. And we have gosh. our little WhatsApp head nodes, admins group and we get to laugh and we're like, can you believe this just happened? No, we can't believe this just happened. And um, we, I always appreciate you all and I think that we work very good as a team. It's awesome, we have a lot of fun and um, I appreciate you being our chief admin and keeping everybody in order. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming on the show. And I hope You're to welcome. see you next season. Yes. All right, darling. Thank you. Everybody, hon. Patrina Ku Parkinson. Bahamian Parkinson. Yes. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody, the No Filter Show. And I don't have enough time to vent because I went and used all my time up on Dr. Sands. But I just want to say about my little venting thing. I went to the Ministry of Education. They had to sign up that I couldn't wear shorts. And I had on Bermuda shorts. I was like, I had on short shorts. And then there's this guy who was wearing his pants hanging and all his drawers was hanging out. But they allowed him in. So I just want to say that I think they should change that rule and use their discretion on who's allowed to go inside which building in shorts. Not boom boom shorts, just regular shorts. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure to share. See you later. Bye. Promotional consideration provided by Oasis Shopping and Quality Home Center.